How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we have another in our Understanding How to Build series where we go each of the leaders in a set and help you understand how to build them. We don't give lists here so if you're looking for a list for Finn unfortunately you will not find it here but if you're looking for some help and some information to help you build a list for Finn to help you build it to your kind of play style and uh, how you like to play the game then feel free to check it out. So as we said, for today we're going to go over understanding how to build Finn as we move on from the villainy side of Vigilance to the heroic side. So before we get into the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It keeps you updated with all my videos as and when they drop. And also by clicking the notification bell, you can get alerts to when my videos do drop so you can watch them there and then or at a later time that suits you best. So that all the way, let's get into it and check out how to, like, well, understanding how to build Finn. So, like we always do when we do these videos, we're going to go ahead and look at the leader because it's, it's going to be difficult to understand how to build the deck for a leader if you don't know what the leader does. Because some leaders have like a kind of theme to them where they basically want to do something specific with certain kinds of cards. So, it's always best to check out those before understanding what they want to do. Because if you build a leader just generically and you don't have anything to benefit, like with Gar Saxon, he's all about upgrades. If you didn't build it with upgrades, then what's the point of using that leader? And with Finn, he's a little bit more generic than. Um, and some of the other ones, like I mean, very generically, doesn't need anything really around to kind of help. He does come in with some interested traits. He has fringe, which kind of at the moment does nothing. I don't know if it ever will, but it's a kind of irrelevant trait. But it does come with trooper. So any, there are like a very, very, very few cards that kind of have a benefit, of, like having the trooper trait. So him having it means he has that benefit from them. But outside of that, he just got the, he's really just the trooper trait. So he's got no more, no like rebel because it's like from the. Um, for the latter three movies, the sequels, yeah, and yeah, it's Finn, this is a rescue, and he gives you access to the vigilance and heroic uh, aspects, so if you don't know, if you, you can play whatever you want in your deck, play any card you want in any deck, but if the aspects on that card you're playing don't match what's in your leader or base, you have to pay an aspect penalty, which is an extra two to its cost for each aspect that doesn't match. So Finn gives you the access to the Vigilance, which is blue, and Heroic, which is white. And if you want to play a card with either of those aspects on, you'd have to pay an aspect penalty for those. But if you say if you want to say you had a Finn with a green base, with a command base, and you want to play a yellow card, you'd have to pay an extra two on top of its cost because yellow does not match what's on Finn or the, or the green base. And same if you want to play a green black card, so a, um, a cunning villainy card, you'd have to pay an extra four on total, like two for each aspect, because none of those match what's on your leader base. So do that bear in mind when you're playing when you play a deck. Like some cards are worth doing the aspect penalty for. But you've got to take in consideration what the card does, how much extra cost it's gonna be, and how useful it's gonna be. But you can play whatever you want, just make sure to take into account the aspect penalty. So while Fit Finn provides you that, he does uh, come down as well, he deploys at a reasonable amount. So he, he comes down not too early, but not too late, at five resources. So once you hit five resources that you control, you can deploy him, bring him out on a solid four, six for his stats, which is pretty good. Four power is quite a decent power. And six health is very nice because it means it's out the range of being able to be just instantly taken out by takedown and gives a decent amount of bulk to it as well. Now with Finn, he's got quite an interesting effect and also he's a rare leader for the set. So he is uh, going to be a rare one to pick. And also, as well as that, he gives you, well, he gives you shields, essentially. Like, protect, he wants to protect his units, like he does in the field. He wants to protect his friends and stuff like that. So he wants to protect the units. Because when he's in the leader, leader, um, well, when he's in the leader area, before he deploys, he has an action ability, which means you need, well, which requires you as a cost to tap him. And then you can defeat a friendly upgrade on the unit. And if you do, you give a shield token to that unit. Now, do remember that friendly means cards you control. So if your opponent puts an upgrade on your card, it's still an upgrade they control. It's on your card, but it's they control, so it's not a friendly one. So you can't sack off or defeat a f like basically an, uh, an opponent's upgrade they put on your cards. It has to be one that you control, being one of your cards. But it means you can defeat any kind of upgrade. You can defeat token, well, tokens like experience tokens. You can defeat upgrades that you put on cards to gain a shield token on that unit, which can be really handy to protect it. Because remember, shield tokens are tokens that go on the card, and if they would take damage, then you lose a shield token instead. And then when he is deployed, he's got the same kind of effect, but now it's on attack. So you can get potentially this off from like two in a turn, this effect, because remember, when a, you le when a leader deploys, even if it was in rest before, so even if you use the effect to tap him and he was tapped, when it comes out, he always comes in ready. So you can use the effect of both Finn before you deploy and then after you deploy and then attack and get the effect to basically sack or kill or defeat 
two uh, friendly upgrades on units to kind of give them shields, which could be very useful. Because his, his own attack is exactly the same as his uh, ever side. Just, we have to attack rather than tapping him to defeat a friendly upgrade on the unit. And if you do give a shield token to that unit, you defeat the uh, upgrade off of. So he's quite an interesting one. But then you've got to take into consideration how easy is it to get upgrades onto cards. Because if you just put an upgrade cards onto cards, then that's taking cards from your hand just to give a simple shield to it. And if you're, like, if you're killing experience, then you're basically losing experience, which is like uh, stat increases, like extra power, extra health. Just to put a shield token in it, which is a shield as a one-time use. As soon as you take damage, it's gone. But it can be very helpful to avoid taking damage on a card and protect them from like quite a lot of damage or even like little bits of damage. So before we get into, so what we want to do is kind of first see the showcase of Finn because he has uh, like all leaders he has a showcase and for his showcase, all right, it doesn't I I don't like it. I reckon it's like a pretty pretty poor one. But then when once again, art is subjective. So like so you can like the showcase, you can not like the showcase. It's up to you. Like it's your opinion. That's it. It doesn't matter, like, even if someone likes it and you don't, it's still your opinion. If you like it, you like it. If someone else likes it or doesn't like it, it's up to them. But uh, in my opinion, this one is pretty, one of the more lackluster showdowns. Like, if you've set to, half of them seem pretty nice, pretty cool, and the other half seem pretty terrible. And Finn Showcase is not great, in my view. But also, there's some cards that can kind of help um, Finn. Like, you've got Rose being like one that's kind of like brought in with the set to go and go with him. Because what Rose does is she cut when she comes she comes down shielded, so she comes down with a shield token and on attack so you, she's got a shield already on her and on attack she can defeat shield tokens to put experience token two experience tokens on a unit. So essentially, you can put shields on stuff with uh, Finn and then use Rose to take that shield off them and put them experience to so convert the shield that uh, Finn puts on to experience. And over time, you can kind of like give two experience by sacking off a shield to a unit. And then use Finn to kill off one of the experience to give a shield to it. And then Rose, once again, um, defeat that shield to put two more experience on and kind of like rank up a little bit on a unit. But that takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, turns to do that. But she comes in pretty solid stats. And even if you give her herself two experience by using her shield, she becomes in a 4 8, which is pretty good for a 4 cost. And then you've got a way you can kind of like constantly, like permanently, with Finn, be able to put experience on stuff. So you've got Inspire Mentor here, which is a card you do need the uh, command aspects. So if you don't want to play command with Finn, you can always play this with four because you have to have a gas penalty of having the command aspect. But if you do play command, you can play this just for two. And this is a pretty nice one to go with Finn because it upgrades onto Finn. It gives an extra 1-1 one, one to his stats, and then becomes a 5-7. Uh, yeah, uh, and then he gains the effect of when he attacks or when he's defeated, you can give an experience to him to another friendly unit. So it means you can swing with Finn, and because both his on attack and his on attack will trigger at the same time, you can choose the order when they resolve. So you can use uh, you can use Inspiremento to put an experience token on uh, experience token onto another unit, and then use Finn's effect to sack off that experience you just put on it to give it a shield. So you're basically putting this experience on it and then killing it to put a shield on it, but you're guaranteed to not sack off anything else you've got. Just keep using the same thing from this effect. So gives a nice little boost to Finn, plus then allows you to have an easy way to keep constantly putting a shield on a unit when Finn attacks. And then of course then Rose can then swing and then take that experience off, show the shield token off, and put two experience on that unit. So those are quite nice ways to kind of make sure you like, constantly get in Finn's effect, because otherwise you're kind of losing losing things that could be useful, just to put shields and shields are things that can go away where experience can't go doesn't go away unless it's actually like well shields are used just from like taking damage. Whereas experience is a little bit harder to remove until the unit is defeated or if you if it's removed by a upgrade take by upgrade removal. But that's that and we got the different aspect aspect uh, combination you can have. So as we have four different color aspects being uh, vigilance, command, aggression and yellow and cunning, we'd being blue, green, red, yellow. You can have different aspect combinations because with a base you get an access to three to avoid the aspect penalty. So with Finn always providing you with Heroic and vigil uh, Vigilance, you can either have the combination of double blue, uh, green blue, red blue, oh sorry, yeah, red blue or yellow blue as your uh, combinations along with the uh, Heroic trait. And what we are, we are going to go into like what the benefits of it with Finn to have in each of these different aspect combinations. Before we do, we do want to check out the ratios because ratios are important because in this game you can run up to three copies of any given card and that means you can have either three copies, two copies or one copy of a card. Now there are benefits to having three, two, or one, and it depends on how well you're gonna like how you feel about the card. Because for example, for a free cost, you might want to have a Sparks Experimenter, 
Because once again, as I said, this is a card that you can chuck on Finn and then make sure he's got a permanent way of always triggering his effect. So when he attacks to um, get rid of an experience uh, upgrade on a unit, because experience tokens are upgrades. And then you can give a shield token to the unit. So exchange that one experience you just gave him for a shield, which can be more useful depending. And this is one you might want to have and basically want to see as soon as you deploy Finn, so you can chuck him on him, increase his stats, and also making that he's then protecting your board. So this is one you want to have free so you can see it as quick as possible, so you're guaranteed to kind of, well, you're like more likely to see it uh, before by the time you deploy Finn early game and be able to use it, so you have that have free copies. And now we got Rose, this is one you could potentially have at two copies, or you can go on the three copies, but you might want to have two copies, because it's one that might be, you don't want to play out, or it might be, um, yeah, it might be one that's a bit too costing for the turn, you want to play other things, so you don't want to see it too early and not like having like multiple together, because once again, she's a... She is a unique unit because you got the little star in front of her name. Any like normally any um card that's got a star in front of his name is a unique unit, meaning you can control one on the board at a given time. So if you get multiple of these early, like if you had three copies and you had multiple of these early, you get have to start resourcing one or like hold on to all of them and make it so you've got dead cat hand. And if you have resourcing cards early, they don't have a smuggle, then you're not gonna see those later game and then maybe not see the rest of them or then not have them when you need them. But if you've got them at two copies, hopefully then you don't see too many too early. Maybe see one, or maybe see one when it comes to the top point when you want to see them, but not have them clog your hand at the beginning. And then we got things like this is the way. So this is a one that um, is a two cost event that allows you to look at the top eight cards of your deck for up to two Mandalorian or upgrade cards and reveal them to your hand and draw. So this could be one that you kind of uh, could use in Finn to kind of search for upgrades, but it's one that doesn't really establish anything on board, but can help you find things you want. So it might be ones that in certain situations, certain decks, you might want to use it as a turn one play to be able to try and find upgrades for Finn. Or if you don't see it, it's not too bad. Like normally with one cost, uh, like one copies of card is normally tech choices where if you see it, it's gr and, it and it's useful in that, in that matchup or that situation, it's great. But if you don't see it and it's not useful, then it sucks. But then if you don't need it and you do see it, you can resource it. If you don't see it, if, well, if you see it and you don't need it, you can always, uh, well, if you, don't, if you don't need it and you don't see it, you don't really care. So that's kind of like a uh, kind of description about the ratios. So if that helps you understand like what, like when to put three, two or one copies of a card in before we get into the different combinations. So with that over, let's have a look at the different combinations, see what they kind of offer for Finn. So like we always do, we always go over the double aspect because these are the ones where with set one, they offered you like, like a very limited um, card pool because for set one at least, um, if you put aspect combinations together from your leader and base, if you have two different aspects, if you wanted to go uh, thin with, that's with anything that's not blue, so with red, yellow, or green, you'd have access to all the blue cards and all the green cards, ignoring the dark side of them, to be able to have a large card pool, a large, like, like a large option of cards to basically build your deck with. But in set one, when you wanted to go double aspect for double, for like double blue, you sacrifice a whole other color, so half your card pool just have access to three cards. And for set one, it was Bendu, Protector, and Vigilance. Now for set two, every time we get a set, we increase the amount of cards we get in each color and each double aspect as well. So for set two, you've now is like more likely you can go into any different leader and have the uh, double aspects. Whereas set one, it was very restrictive. Only really one leader from the aspect were actually good with it because they had a good way to use those uh, free double aspect cards and also not worry about having too many, like uh, a limited card pool. And now we got double, now we got double the cards for what we have set one. This is more of an option for all leaders. And like we do for every um, aspect as well, we get uh, an option of base. Now there were no uh, new rare bases for set two, so nothing to worry about that. But the one rare base we do have for set uh, for blue is Security Complex, and what it provides you is it loses, uh, it sacrifices five health. So you you can either use a thirty health ba base that has no effect, or have a twenty five health base in Security Complex that sacrifices that five health to have a uh, an effect you can use once per turn, well once per game, sorry. And that is an epic action. The epic action is give a shield token to a non leader unit. So this can kind of go well with Finn, because it's then putting the shield on it as, as it is. But then it's a shield token, not anything else. So even then, even if it was a different uh, token, like a spirit token, you could still kill that for um, Finn to turn into a shield token. But this is a nice way to kind of uh, like protect things outside of Finn, so you can potentially protect 
two cards in a turn, or even three cards on Finn's deploy turn to give him more shields. And that can be very useful, and you've got to think about, is it worth the sacrifice of five health? Because then if you go against a more like very aggressive deck or aggro, you can kind of struggle with having enough health. But then with double blue, it's kind of more helpful because you've got a lot of healing in it. Because um, if you didn't know, each of the aspects have kind of like a theme to them as well. And for a vigilance, it's all about playing defensively with the ability to heal and remove threats from play and protect your base from attack. So like using uh, things like sentinel, healing effects, and also a removal uh, events. And this aspect is perfect for if you want to play very patiently and kind of like hold off a, like against a, a like a onslaught of attacks, and then come at the end of it grinding out, running out, and basically overwhelming your opponent with advantage. Is a very nice one if you want to play a very defensive control kind of game. And while the dark side of blue is a lot more controlling because that's just how the dark side is. The light side of blue can be very controlling as well. Now, if we go for double blue, not only do you get access to basically these bases, but you also get access to even you got a limited card pool. And having even then, you get a limited card pool with having having access to blue cards. You do have access to now these six different double aspect cards: being Bendu, Protector, Vigilant, Sugi, Second Chance, and Midnight Repairs. Now, this could be handy because you've got Bendu here, which is a good one you can put a shield on because he's Sentinel, helping you protect your opponent, the rest of your cards in that same arena, and base from attacks. And he's got a very useful effect where when he attacks, you can, the next non-light or dark uh, card you play, well, yeah, card you play, costs two less. I mean, you can make something that's not got the heroic or villainy aspect, costs two less after it swings. And it's a perfect card to give a shield token to with Bendu, to, uh, well, uh, Finn, so you can kind of protect it. So while he's protecting everything else, you're protecting with Finn. You also have Protector here, being a one-cost uh, upgrade you can put on a unit to give a unit Sentinel. Gives it an extra plus one to its stats as well. So actually one health and one attack. And it's sent on you can always set this off a of film uh fin when the cards when the unit uses on is about like is near death. So you can go and give it a shield to protect it a little bit longer. You also have Vigilance, which has some really nice uh, effects as well, because each aspect has a uh a event from set when it's double aspect, four cost, and is named after the aspect itself. And they give you uh four options, you can only choose any two among them. And for a vigilance, it's mill six cards on the opponent's deck, uh heal five damage tree base. Kill something that's free or less, uh, marine HP, and also again give a shield token to it. So more ways to give shields, more healing, and even go for a mill strategy if you want to as well. So this is a very nice one because it's very versatile and very easy to use. And you've got Sugi as well being a pretty nice one, where it's a 4 cost event, that's a 4 6, which is pretty good stance for a 4 cost. And also if your opponent's up, cards upgrade, you can, you can gain Sentinel, so you can protect your units from everyone. So a good one to give uh, a shield to for Sugi when she has Sentinel. And then you can even smuggle her out as well because you've got a smuggle class of 6 and 1 blue. Then you've got Second Chance, which is a pretty nice one, where it's kind of, kind of a loop. If Well, if you've got a loop with Guard Saxman on this, this is a more expensive upgrade being forecast, but then it gives you a kind of given, uh, put on uh, when defeated effect, where when it's defeated, you can play it for free for your discard pile any point during that phase. So if you put this on a unit you don't want to keep around and it gets taken out, you can play it back for free back in your board, but it will come in rested unless that was stated. And then lastly, you've got Midnight Repair as being a two-cost event that allows you to heal eight damage from any number of units. So if you've got a Sentinel unit and it keeps getting damaged, uh, you can always heal it. But then when you're putting shields on cards with Finn, that's not as relevant since you're going to have a shield to protect him from damage that way. So this could be a very nice way if you want to play very controlling. And then like Bendu is a very good thing to go with uh, Finn, allowing you to put a, uh, experience on him. Well, put, it, like, put an upgrade on him and then keep putting a shield on him so that way he gains uh, a shield. Protected, protects the rest of your board in the ground arena, and it makes your things cost cheaper. It's a really good way to play them. Then we move on to command, so a bit of green. And now, if you wanted to know what green kind of uh, focuses are, so green's all about accelerating, accelerating your resources and calling upon lots of units or the strength of, or like strengthening in the units you already have in play. So like building a huge board or dropping big things and then strengthening them up. Now this is a great one for if you want to overwhelm your opponent with a massive board, like overwhelm your opponent with just pure, pure force and put, like just tons of units, and just uh, yeah, just swarm the board in that way. So if you want to play, if you want to play a uh, color that allows you to ramp and play more units quickly or bigger units quickly, or even just go really wide on your board, this is the perfect thing to do. And you get one of the most overused bases for it in the rare base. So while you have the 30 health uh, bases with no effects, you also have the Energy Converge Lab as your rare base. 
So its effect allows you to play a unit that costs six or less from your hand. You give ambush for this phase. Now you do have to still pay the cost for the card that you play. You don't play a six cost for free. You have to pay the cost for it. But it gains ambush, meaning it can ready and attack opponent's unit the same turn it's played, where normally it would just come rested. So it's going to be very useful, and it's most ever played for a reason because ambush is not a great skill. But also with um, the color, the answer combination, you get some pretty good units as well. So you get Sindari Peacekeeper, which is a very good one. A free cost one five, so one five are not being great. It's very sturdy for having five health. Only one power is not great, but it's got raid one. Not sorry, raid two and restore two. Raid meaning when it attacks, it gains a power equal to the amount in the raid. So raid two means when it attacks, it gains extra two power, and restore two means when it attacks. It heals for how much is in the restore. So in this turn, in for Sindari Peacekeeper, here swing, gain an extra two power up for that swing, and heal two damage from your base when he swings as well. So that's very good, especially on a free cost unit. That's one five. You can keep protecting it with uh, Finn. You can keep around and keep like kittens quite hard, and also healing your base as well. You also have some pretty nice big units like General Raikun at home one as well. General Raikun can be a really nice one. But a five, uh, six cost comes out of five seven, which is very good stats, very very good stats, and also has effective triggers on both when it's played or when it attacks, allowing you to choose a friendly unit and give it Sentinel. But then, uh, if, if it has Sentinel, give it Experience Token. It so yeah, cause have, if it choose a unit, if it doesn't have if it has Sentinel, give an Experience Token to it. If it doesn't have Sentinel, you make it have Sentinel for that turn. So you can keep giving something Sentinel, keep it using like that as a way to uh, a unit to protect your base and other units. And if it already has Sentinel, it basically keeps giving gives an experience, which is then perfect since it's got experience on it, to then allow um, Finn to sign that experience off to give a shield token to it. So it kind of pairs pretty well with that. And then you got home one as well, which is a good way to uh, whilst it spam the board and also give you a bit of healing. Because while it's a heavy one at eight cost, it goes in the space arena, which is not where not many units are actually played. Like you play more in the ground arena than you use space. Comes down with solid 7 7 stats and gives you, it has restored it too, so when it attacks, it heals too. And gives all your other units restore once. So any one of you, is on the board, any of your unit swings, it gains a restore one, meaning it heal, swings and heals one. And restore stacks as well. So if you had home one with Sundari Peacekeeper, when Sundari Peacekeeper attacks, it, heal, it heals three instead of two because it gains the restore one along with its restore two, and two plus one is three. And you can always bring out Sundari Peacekeeper with home one. Because when it's played, you can play a heroic unit from your discard pile, and it plays, and it costs free less. So you can play a, a free cost for free, or you can play something bigger, cheaper, as long as you've got resources to play along with playing out home one. So if you've got lots of resources, you can actually go home one and something big like Riken, and just pay pay essentially eleven to get both those out on the board. Or you can go ahead and just play home one and play out something cheap for free if you wanted to. And like we've already gone over experimental being a very good one to go with Finn, allowing you to basically put something on it so it keeps constantly giving a shield over the sink. So it go experimental, put a shield on sink, and then Finn will pop the shield so it can put an ex shield to uh, sorry experience so it can put the shield token instead. And then you got you ring reinforcement being a very good one, very high costing event at seven, but allows you to like swarm the board because it allows you to look at the top ten cards of your deck and play up to three units with a combined cost of seven or less, each of them for free. As long as uh, basically, so you can bring out a seven cost for free, or a six and a one, or a five and a two, or like even like a f two threes and a one, or a three and two twos. You can build up to three re three units from the top ten, and basically just potentially span the board of three units, or just one big one, or a big one and a little one, depending. Really nice card, and it's very good, and it's like a very good card using a majority of the uh, heroic decks, even for set one, and it's very good when you can do a fin because you can put more things on the board. And then more things to protect. Now the long light -like side of it, we've got some pretty nice cards as well. You've got the cheap cards like Scanning Officer and Yularen. Scanning Officer would be like anti-smuggle, allowing you to, when played, look at three of your opponent's resources. If any of them have smuggle, defeat them, and then make them place the top card of the deck in their energy to replace them. You also have Colonel Yularen as well. And he is one that allows you to heal. So when you play a command unit, including yourself as well, you heal one damage to your base, give you a bit more heal in green as well. And you've got things like... Uh, Aquatin's uh, Assault Cruiser, being a very good space unit, 8 cost, 7, 8. Comes with an ambush as well, so you can attack another unit at the same turn it's played. So you can re uh, ready and re sack a another space unit your opponent controls the same turn it's played. And when it does defeat, well, when it does, it does attack and defeat a non leader unit, you can put the defeated unit into play as a resource under your control. So you can basically kill your opponent's units with this and then ramp it into your resources uh, for you to use. That's pretty nice, that's pretty good as well. Not only that, but you have some pretty good events as well, like a uh, resupply, a way to ramp you, just pay free and put this into your play as a resource. You can ramp up with this. And timely intervention, this one a nice one, being allowed you to play your unit 
and give it ambush uh, for this phase using this card. And this is one that's pretty nice because you can uh, you can always resource it early and then smuggle it in because it only costs two to smuggle and one green. So you can use this later on to kind of like use this to kind of ambush something for free. Well, no, not for free, but um, bring in something in ambush as long as you can pay two more to its cost to play the event. So that's what you want. That's the nice thing you get from green. And green's a pretty good, good way to play uh, Finn. Not because you can just play Inspire Mentor without the Aspect Penalty, but also because you've got a lot of good things in the heroic side of green, as we've saw from set one. Now next we've got Aggression. So as we've seen, Aggression... Aggression is one of the, uh, like the name suggests, is a very aggro kind of um, uh, color, where it's all about pushing out damage. Because what ag aggression wants to do is attack with, well, attack with maximum efficiency and dish out loads of damage across, like, to your, bo your opponent's units and to their base. And because of that, this aspect is a very great fit for anyone who likes the like fast pace and like aggressive playstyles, and now I'm um, trying to break through your opponent's defense and basically just aggro them down until you win. Like, that's the perfect kind of way to play it. If, if you want this, that's the perfect kind of way you want to play, then aggression is the way for you. And it's basically, well, it's, it's a pretty good one, but it's not when you, it's not as good as like a ECL, uh, ECL. but um, it's an epic action for its rare base being target town, allows you to deal free damage to a damaged non-leader unit. So it can't attach a lead, can't use it on a leader unit. That's uh, one downside, but all of them kind of uh, don't really affect a leader unit in any way. But, and you can't just spread out like free damage for free, that's not what it does. But if you've got something that's damaged, you try to take out, but we're just off by a little bit of damage, Tarkin Town can help you finish it off, which is a very good way to use it. Not only that, but you've got some very good cards in the light side of aggression as well, because that's like because it's a very aggressive color, and uh, like one of the one of the one of the decks like Sabine was very good at using aggression, like the light side is very good with aggression. So we've got Green Squadron A Wing here, it's been a very cheap two cost unit. You got red free as long as I had to go with it as well. Very good space unit as well for free. And those together as well, they both gain raids that are attacking for more, but when they're attacked, they don't, they don't do as much damage. But red free also allows you to give all your heavy heroic units raid once that are attacking for a little bit more. You've even got Wrecker, who's a big, big unit as well, because he's a six cost, seven, six, one of the new ones as well, over one as well. So if he defeats a unit and that does, and there's uh, any excess damage on a unit exceeds the HP, go to your opponent's base. And he's also got a very nice effect, which when played, you can defeat one of your resources, a friendly resource. And if you do, deal free damage to a ground unit. So kind of like just sack off a experience or one of your resources, just deal free damage to five damage to a ground unit, which can either take it out or damage it so it's almost dead. You also got some good events and upgrades. So you got Heroic Resolve here, which is a nice one. It's only a one cost, giving one one to the uh, to a stat, so it can be used either with Finn to kind of kill this to give it shield to a unit. Or you can keep this on because even though it only gives 1-1 one, one to stats, also has a narrow effect, you can use it at a later time. Which is an action effect that by paying 2 and defeating this uh, a heroic resolve on this unit, so either itself or never heroic resolve, you kind of got onto a unit, on the same unit. And it allows you to attack with the unit, give 4 extra power to that unit, and also give overwhelm as well. So if you're attacking a unit, and while well, you're attacking with a unit, if you attack to a never, one of your opponent's units, it has overwhelm. So if it defeats the unit and any excess damage... Uh, that exceeds the HP of that unit, go to your opponent's base. And also you've got four calls of believing, a kind of like nice way to kind of finish off and just like push uh, extra damage, because it allows you to fill the top four cards of your deck, so you kind of look at the top four cards and then rearrange them in any order, like get uh, discard any ones you reveal and, put, and basically put the rest back in what order, or put all of them back in however order you want. And then for each of the four, each, what each of the each heroic card you reveal from the four, you deal one damage to your opponent's base. You can potentially hit four heroic units and deal four damage to your opponent for free resource, which is pretty nice. And then put them back on top in any way you want, and discard any ones among those four that you don't want on your top of your deck. But not only that, there's the non light side of uh, aggression, which can give you some pretty nice units. You've got like benthic two tubes and Patissing insurgent being very nice cheap ones. Both uh, can gain raid by either Bentic when he attacks, give a friendly aggression unit raid, and Patissian Insurgent being gains raid if you have a never aggression unit on board. You also have things like Clan Challengers, which is a very nice one to upgrade because he gains a benefit while upgraded. So when he he's got raid free, so when he attacks, he gains free power. So it means even though he's free, uh, got free power, when he swings, he gets an extra free power, being six when he swings. And while he's upgraded, which a shield token will upgrade, uh, count as upgraded, he gains overwhelm, meaning any excess damage he does to a unit that exceeds the health goes to your opponent's base. Not only that, but you've got some pretty nice things like infantry skill being a very cheap upgrade you put on it, so just to give something saboteur, and then swing. So you can basically use this to 
Uh, upgrade a unit to give it a saboteur, meaning as it can ignore a sentinel, an extra 1-1 one, one to the stats, and then swing with the unit, then use Finn to swing, and then kill off the infantry skill after it's like bypassed the sentinel, to then give a shield token to that unit as well, so it's protected. Not only that, you've got one of the unique cards that kind of benefit having a trooper, because you've got precision, precision fire here, it allows you to attack with a unit, and it gains saboteur, meaning it can ignore a sentinel or defeat shields, and if the, if, if the card you're attacking with is a trooper, which Finn is, get extra two power for this attack so it could be very very useful in that aspect like allowing to fin to kind of push through at a base rather than uh, a sentinel like ignoring sentinel so you can then swing give a shield token to something by second off a token on, upgrade on it and he's got an extra two power for that attack as well so that's for aggressive if you want to be a very if you want to be a very aggressive deck and kind of like just push damage then aggression is a very good one to use for it and then we come to the last one being cunning so cunning is a very controlling uh aspect because basically what cunning wants to do is adapt to any situation with powerful effects and immediate effects as well and use lots of tools for disrupting your opponent's plans be if they want to play something or attack with something you can stop it or even like put something back to your hand like returning things back so they uh, have to pay the energy back to play it down now this is an aspect that's perfect fit for anybody who wants to respond quickly to any problem your opponent would drop and have an answer to anything they could potentially throw at you uh, in any any way so if you want to play a more controlling kind of way and kind of answer for everything, then cunning is a good way, to, a good aspect to have. And it does come with pretty nice effects as well. And it does come with a, uh, a rare base, but it's not the best one. It's not the yeah, it's not the best one. But it's you can pretty use it. It could get better in the future. But its epic action is allow you just to give a non-leader unit m minus four power for this phase, making it something weaker. That's not a leader, and that could just mean that it, the card doesn't do as much damage. Or when you're attacking and taking out by attacking, it doesn't do as much damage back in retaliation. So it could be useful, but I haven't seen it used at all uh, sent one, and I it, but it could be one of those ones that gets a little better in the future. But for units, you've got pretty nice ones. You've got Chopper here being a nice one to allow you to attack. You can get, say, on attack, where you can discard the top card of your opponent's deck if you want to go for a nice one for a little bit of mill. And if it's an event you hit, you exhaust one up players uh resources so you can kind of attack them mill on their events and then tap a resource down so they're one resource down for the turn meaning you can kind of hold them off playing something you wanted to play by tapping them down by one you also have grogu here as well which being a pretty nice unit two cost so a good one to play turn one no power but it does have a good amount of health of five and also has a nice ability where you can tap him to tap on your opponent's unit so you can kind of yeah tap Grogu down, so you can tap your opponent's unit down so you can't use his action ability that if you need to tap it or even attack with it that same turn. Then you've got Rogue Operative being a very nice one. This one's a very cheap unit of three, allowing you to, um, and also a trooper as well, so it kind of gets a benefit. And he's got two two power and four health, but he's got Saboteur and Raid 2, so when he attacks, he can ignore Sentinel, defeat shields, and also gain two power from the attacks. And also, the light side of Cunning does have some pretty nice um, events as well. Like you've got Sraka Rebellion being a very nice hand control one, one you can use as early as turn one. It allows you to look at your opponent's hand and discard a card from it. That's was very good because you get to look at your opponent's hand and know exactly what you've got. So have the hand knowledge. Also, rip out any card in their hand from it that you don't want them to have. So if there's a card, if they've only got one uh, one card in their hand, they can play turn one. You can rip out your hand so that way they don't play anything, have to just pass and then move on to the next turn while you've done something, kind of seen what they've potentially got. You also got Let the Wookiee Win being a very nice trick card. There's only a two cost and it gives you gives your opponent a choice of two options. They can either allow you to uh, uh, untap up to six resources. So they can allow you to untap up to six, which means you get the, the, a plus four back on your resources after using this. Or they allow you to re uh, ready a friendly unit. And if it's a Wookiee, attack with it and it gains two plus attack. But it's more likely you're going to be either getting six resources back or readying a friendly unit so you can attack again. And then they got the choice. They got to think about it. Because if they give you six resources back, you can play, you can play more things. Essentially, you can, they can, it allows you to play more things that turn, and if they allow you to just ready a card, if it's if it's a cut, if you've got anything that can potentially swing and finish off game like a base, or swing to take out something, and finish off like with an attack, they uh they can give you that as well. So they got to think about that. They want to give you more resources to play more things, or ready a unit that you can attack with again. A very tough choice. And with the not non heroic side of cunning, you've got these cards. So you have. Outer Rim Headhunter being one that could uh, get more of a benefit the longer Finn's actually out and deployed because when he attacks, you can if you control leader, you can exhaust the non-leader unit and also gains raid one so it attacks and gains attack. 
to be a pretty nice one in the space arena to be able to play out uh, and get more effects while Finn's deployed. You also got Tobias Beckett here as well, being um, a unit where when you play a well when you play a non-leader card, you can exhaust a unit that costs the same as or less than the card you played and uses bloody once around. Not only that, it's got pretty solid stats for four four costs being four or five, and even then, if you're not playing cunning, you can even still play it in your deck, smuggle in because its smuggle cost is five and blue aspect, I meaning you don't have to worry about running cunning if you if because you can always smuggle it in. Then you've got things like chat pack, these are pretty nice upgrades, and these are ones you can make basically make use of it. You also got the uh, snapshot reflexes, which is nice here as well, being another good upgrade, which you can basically make use of for their uh, their when played effects when attached, and then like basically just defeat them with um, Finn to give shield tokens on the units you play on. Because jetpack is a two cost, it gives you two, extra two power for the attack for the uh, while equipped. And when played, it gives a shield token to that attached unit, and at the start of the regroup phase, you defeat that token. So this is a good one to play on a unit that you could attack, you plan to attack into another unit with. So it gives an extra power boost to kind of make sure it's doing more damage, and gives it a shield token, and it's always best to use it to crash into another unit, because that shield token is going to be uh, defeated at the end of the turn anyway, so you might as well use it to protect you while taking out one of their units. It's a very good upgrade. And then you can always um, defeat it with Finn when your Finn attacks after that card, the card you equip this with is attacked. So that we can give it a shield token to that unit, and that stays there until it's gone. You've got snapshot reflexes being one that, when played, you can attack with the attached unit. So you can play it on a unit to attack with it straight away and give 1-1 one, one, uh, attack to it. Well, yeah, 1-1 one, one to its stats, and attack straight away with it. And then after that, swing with Finn, and then get rid of the upgrade on snap, snapshot reflex. Of re uh, get rid of snapshot reflexes to put a, um, a shield on that unit as well. Not only that, you can you always use Evacuate as well, being a very good event, being a wide uh, wide removal, because while well, it's not permanent removal in like defeating things, it does clear the board by for six, returning each non-leader unit to his owner's hand, and that basically doesn't count Finn or their leader, but everything else back to so yours and your opponents, but you can always return things back to your hand that are like damaged after they've attacked, and then clear the board and you bounce your opponents back board as well, so you've got nothing on it as well while you keep your leader out there. So that's what the like, cutting off is, pretty nice cards there. So if you want to play a more controlling way with Finn, you can always go with Cunning, and that's a pretty good way to play it. Now also, as well as that, Finn being in the heroic side means he's got access, he does have access to some just, just heroic cards. You do have some nice ones, but um, there's not many you can really make use of. Like uh, Most of them, like Wing Leader here, are like Rebels, so you can't really use them at all. But the nice little benefit is that um, with Wing Leader... You could, uh, if you if you play a lot of rebels, then you can use wing leader boost, and then that gives experience tokens to a unit to then sack off one of them for a shield. So if you run some rebels, wing leader could be my nice, but you don't run too many rebels. Most of the cards are like just rebels for that's like pushing, but wing leader could be a nice one. So if you do run more rebels and light light side, then you can give experience to them, which can then be re used as fuel for Finn to give shield tokens out. You also have Grief Karga as well as a way to like a turn one play to kind of find you some upgrades on the top of five if you're playing other upgrades, even if it's trying to find Inspire Mentor to put on Finn, or if upgrades just to use Finn to remove the upgrades to give shield tokens. And then the same thing with This Is The Way, just it looks for a lot forever but doesn't establish anything on board, like Grief Karga comes down as a 2-2 two -two unit, but only looks at top five, whereas This Is The Way it looks at the top eight, doesn't establish anything on board, but you can find up to two upgrades, and even Van Lorenz if you want to put them in with this as well. So while it doesn't have many amazing things in Heroic, it does have a few things that could be beneficial to add as well. Now next we're going to what just Finn offers for his aspects on his own. Finn offers the access to vin uh, Vigilance and Heroic. So for those both together in blue, well blue with Heroic, you've got some of these. You've got Clan Ren Defender, which is a very nice one, where when played, you can give experience token to a unit, so you can give it to itself. And then of course Finn can remove that to put a shield on it. Now while he doesn't have the greatest stats, it uh, two free, you can still it's a pretty good unit to play turn one, even if you're just attacking with a two free, it's pretty nice. And then you got Rose as well. We always talk about Rose as a way to kind of keep uh, making sure that Finn uh, has fuel to kind of put on a unit. You also have Ray as well, who kind of goes well. She's a five cost and four seven sort of stats, a so pretty good stats for a cost of all, very good. And also, does the first bit doesn't matter because you're not playing uh, Kylo Ren. But when she attacks, you can heal two damage from a unit. And if it's a non-heroic unit, you give a shield token to it. So she has different, another way to give like shields out to anything that's not heroic, but also heal damage from it, so it can keep things a bit healthy. 
and it can heal any unit for two damage, even a south or another unit as well. So it can be very useful there. And you got Razor Crest as well, being a pretty good space unit you can play out. A four cost three four, pretty nice. Also has restore, so when it attacks, it heals two it heals two damage from your base. And this is one where if you are uh, defeating actual actual upgrades, like uh, upgrades you have to play on the cards and not experience the tokens, you can use as a way to kind of gather them back from your discards. So you can put them back out there as well. And you got the forces with me, being a pretty nice one. Where if you have got a force unit on play, on um, play. You can get the full effect, but even if you don't, you can get the nice effects of a, of a for four. Now to choose a friendly unit and give two experience to it. Uh, so you can basically just go four, give experience to it, and then have the second line with the uh, second part, which is uh, you may attack with the chosen unit. So use four, give a friendly unit plus two experience and attack with it, and then you can use Finn to kind of get rid of one of those experience tokens, put a shield on it, and then if you do control a force unit, which Ray is, if you do play Ray, you can use this with it and get the full effect. You can give a shield token to that chosen unit as well. So if you've got a force unit, you can go give two experience, a shield, and attack with it. If you don't have a force unit, you basically give two experience token and then attack with it. Uh, and then it's got two experience for a spin to kind of defeat off to put shields on it instead. It's a very nice kind of card you can use with it. And for the non heroics out of blue, you kind of have some really nice events and other units as well because you've got very good events in blue. Because they've got at least, what's that, two, four events you can use to take out things. You've got takedown, which kills anything that's a. Uh, Five or less. You got Fell the Dragon here, which allows you to defeat any non-leader with five or more power. You got Vanquish, allows you to uh, defeat anything that's not a leader. And then you got Felt Rivals for here, which basically defeats any unit, no matter what it is, even leader units. Not only that, but you got some pretty good units as well to play. You got Embo being a very good one, a three cost three four, as we've seen. That's very good stats on a lot of three costs, even a set set one. And when he completes an when he completes an attack, if the defender is if it was attacking a unit and it was it was feared, then you heal up to two uh, two damage from a unit. So it could be even from itself, like you can take out something and heal back two of the damage it was taken. You got Survivor's Gauntlet here, allowing you to like move upgrades among among your units because it's five cost four six in the space race. And when played or on attack, you can attach an upgrade on a unit to another enemy unit controlled by the same player. So you can move your shield tokens around or experience tokens around. So you can like move an experience, like a move an upgrade off of one unit to another unit you kind of want to give a shield to. Then use Finn to give a shield token by getting rid of that upgrade. And you've got Fen Rao as well, which is a 6 cost 5 6 you can play in the ground arena. When he's played, you can play an upgrade from your hand um, to a unit, like, and it costs 2 less. So you can play it either on itself or another unit. So, um, yeah, put an upgrade on something. So you can either sack it off a of Fin or has a good upgrade to make use of. And then if you play an upgrade on this unit himself, Fen Rao himself, you can give an enemy unit plus minus 2 2 for this phase. So you put an experience or any, you, um, if you put anything on Fen Rao, it minus 2 2, then you can. Get rid of that upgrade using Finn to put a shield token on you on Fenral, and because it's then got an upgrade on it, you can then uh, minus basically yeah minus two to a unit again, which is pretty handy. So that's what Finn offers for just his own thing, and that is it for the video. So hopefully that has uh, helped you understand what the options are for Finn. So what Finn does, what the options are, the ratio like the um ratios as well, and also which way like the best way you feel will help you and how like your play style to play Finn and how you're going to go around building it. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. For the next one, we will be going over the last of the Vigilance leaders being Ray. So if you're interested in learning how to build Ray, check that out next. But apart from that, that is me done for now. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Like a boss.